Good morning and welcome to Life in the Nation's Camarillo. You know, this week my dad got into an accident and he had to go to the hospital and get stitches. And during that entire time we were able to pray and just declare healing and now he's fine. Uh, let's just begin this time with worship. <laughs> Well, good morning and welcome to Life for the Nations. Camarillo, sorry that we're, it's um, funny the way Facebook has changed things around and so now the screen has to be in a certain direction. But you know, that doesn't matter. What matters is that God is the one who reigns and rules in our world and in our life. Oh, sorry. Every detail of our lives is already uh, established by him and so what's key is that we are aligned to his plans to his purposes aligned to his frequency in heaven 
Um, I want to start right now with a little prayer. Let's just thank the Lord. Like uh, Susie said last night, uh, we were in the hospital at an emergency room and they took really good care of us. It was a real, uh, actually a real blessing to be around such godly people. But this morning we are praising God that Nick's finger is just fine after he sliced it pretty badly with some kind of like, uh, like a carpet knife, carpet knife and he was cutting some drywall and he pulled it the wrong direction and boy did he slice. And so um, there was a lot of events around it. And four hours later we were finally home and the whole family is just rejoicing that that all went well. That really it was not as, as horrific as, the shock was probably the worst thing. But let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for the supernatural energy and strength that you are giving each one of us this morning after this. Um, really difficult evening. Thank you that healing is already flowing in Nick's body and in this finger. And we just thank you, Lord, for the doctors and the nurses and the volunteers who were so gracious, the receptionists, so gracious to take good care of us. And we just praise you, Lord, for um, for complete healing. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for everyone that is tuning in. We release over each one of them your supernatural blessings. And I send ministering angels right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, you send your angelic host to go and minister right now to each person that is tuning in, Father. Holy Spirit, move in their home that the open heavens would fall upon them. And they would understand that intimacy of what it is to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, because you give us all the tools and the strategies that we need when we tap into Christ, when we, we say yes to your frequency. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Psalms 141, verse 3 says, Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. And then 1 Corinthians 14, 5. I wish you could all speak in tongues, but even more, I wish you could all prophesy. For prophecy is greater than speaking in tongues unless someone interprets what you're saying so that the whole church will be strengthened. When I was little, I remember that my mother had to constantly tell me to think before speaking. She would always repeat that because I'd say something that was awkward or embarrassing to her. And in my little girl mind, I never understood why I was getting yelled at. I really had no idea because this phrase made no sense to me. Of course, I thought, I was thinking before I spoke and I made sure I said exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Today I understand that phrase a lot better. It took many years for me to understand how powerful my mouth is and many more years to learn to think before I speak and be strategic with my words. I understand today that my words are need to be spoken in agreement with heaven and that I am to prophesy and speak what I hope to see for justice and righteousness. What I hope to see, for example, with the healing in Nick's thumb, or uh, no, his forefinger, that it, I already am thanking him. Thank you, Lord, that it is already healed. Also, the next thing we need to be careful of is not take the bait when we're emotionally entangled and, and, and angry over a situation and, and we're getting baited. And, and we understand that people can come around being used by the devil to bait us to want to fall into those traps. And then we fall into that sin of getting into arguments and into, into anger. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So when you speak strategically into your future and into whatever damaging situation is there, whether it's someone baiting you and making an argument or you yourself are falling into speaking careless words, maybe you're overly sarcastic, maybe you, you walk into it and you just can't wait to say something you think is funny, I fall into that category. A mature person understands the power of their words and how to guard their mouth and how to speak strategically into the future of what they want to see, for example, over your children. Maybe they're going through a very difficult time and you are not speaking words that are strategic. Instead, you're speaking words that are full of worry and concern and, uh, and, and fret. Or you're angry over something and all you can do is repeat, repeat, repeat how angry you are. Mature people understand the power of their words. Psalms 141, 9. 
Keep me from the jaws of the trap which they have set for me and the snares of those who do iniquity. Oftentimes, people we love are baiting us to speak and say something that will maybe validate them and their poor choices. Maybe they are full of words of antagonism towards you personally or to your children. Do you get all defensive? Do you know right, what right words to speak out? What if you're on like social media and you're encountering some stranger that's baiting you? Do you fall for that bait? Do you use words on the social media to put them down? Do you, do you have something you want to say? Happens? Does it no, happen? not, not put them down, but I, I have, I realized that uh, I basically, I cannot now say stop to kind of put in comments because it kind of feels like it's uh, useless in a way. Yeah. You're not going to convince yeah. anybody on social media. Even though you kind of feel like you want to kind of... Put in your two cents. Well, put in... You can also... What's it? You kind of correct them. Correct them. But then it's like... But they already have their mind set up. So I don't think... If I say something to correct them, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you what the yeah. best correction is on social media is the Word of God. And uh, not towards one single person. Just post on your social media words of knowledge words of god uh, of, of his truth of his um of his power of his direction words that are full of hope and full of justice that's what we need to be posting on our social media and only that a lot of times we put other people's quotes uh and they might be godly people and uh but we want to make sure that there's a reason for it that, that we are also backing that up why am i posting something of dl moody or or someone else, Corey Ten Boone. Why? Why? What is the purpose? Because all, although those people are godly, we want to hear what God is moving in your life today. Today, not from the past, not from years and years ago, but what is the revelation God is giving to you today? Well, our mouths carry so much power, and so the devil often also does something else. He'll set traps for us so that we self-sabotage ourselves. We might be speaking out words of hope and truth, and all of a sudden we're like, but that'll never happen. Boom. You just sabotaged your own prophetic word. Or you are mocking it. Yeah, but that's never... You always end your sentence with, well, that's never going to happen. Or those people are just never going to change. Or, ha ha, let's just see how that happens. And then we start quoting as all the facts as to why that will never never come about. Yeah, so sometimes, I mean, well, cats also, that, let's see that you... Let's see... You are kind of quoting that be thankful and all the time, but then like let's say this kind of thing happens. Am I thankful that uh, uh, we weren't able to finish the project? Yeah. We ended up at the emergency room. There was all sorts of tests that were taken, and and so, all those things. Are so we really are, grateful? Are, I mean, are are we kind of let's say applying what we are teaching? Yeah. That are we thankful? I mean, it's more like yeah, are we just grumpy about the whole thing, or are we always thankful in all circumstances? That's right. The devil doesn't want us to prophesy and speak in agreement with heaven because he wants people entrapped and lost. Uh, the devil doesn't want you to speak the word of God because he knows that breaks his strategic hold over you if you're living in fear or in worry. The devil has daily plans for you, and his goal is for people to fall into his traps and stop the kingdom of God advancing. If you know Jesus Christ, don't fall and fall for his bait. It can come in many different ways, whether it's someone you dearly love, speaking words that are untrue and careless, or it's somebody that uh, you respect and you're like, whoa, I thought that person was someone I was supposed to be listening to. The Lord needs to give each one of us discernment. Some of us think we're full of discernment, but really all we're full of is our own self-importance. Our words and our truth is all we can hear. And we've got to be so careful to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. Well, we're watching the TV show The Chosen right now. And there is a scene where the Apostle Peter, he became the Apostle Peter, but in The Chosen you can see he's just a fisherman, ignorant, who shoots his mouth off. And he baits Matthew, who is played as the, he's the tax collector. But he's also trying to be like the leader. And he's trying to be the leader and take over and tell Jesus what to do constantly. Uh, and Matthew, he's so furious with Matthew one evening in, in one of the scenes because he was a tax collector and he was charging such high taxes and he was putting all the people into debt. And Peter says to him some words that were uh, very painful for Matthew to hear. 
He says, I will never forgive you. And Matthew had not come to the end of himself. He didn't have a, a real realization of why Peter felt so angry. You know, in, in Matthew's mind, he'd made a strategic and good plan to become better than everybody else. Uh, maybe he had been, Matthew had been put down, I don't know, by others. And he had a keen mind and he's like, you know what, I'm going to put them down. I'm now going to become wealthier than all of them. Uh, and it's obvious that Peter is very immature and living in his emotions and he's full of self-righteous pride. He really and honestly thinks that he is entitled to say, I will not forgive that man. Uh, Matthew, on the other hand, as well, prideful, saying, well, I made a good decision. He refuses to apologize to anybody for what he said. Each of us as Christians, if you have accepted Jesus as Lord, each of us has an incredible overcoming power. We carry the overcoming power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So there is actually no excuse for words or emotions that are negative destructive or full of fear measure your words before you speak we can all do things through christ who strengthens us ephesians 1 19 says i also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of god's power for us who believe in him this is the same power that raised christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at god's right hand in the heavenly realms you and i are seated next to him at the right hand of God. We have incredible power. As a matter of fact, in the same uh, TV show of The Chosen, at one point Jesus sends all the disciples out two by two, and he says, I'm giving you my power and authority. Right now I am authorizing you for this time, but in the future you're going to have it all the time. Why did he say that? And I remember thinking, aha, that was the Holy Spirit. That was the Holy Spirit that did not come into the church era until Acts one, uh, Acts two one. If you read Acts two one, it says that it came in as a great thunder, as a great crash. It was a, it was tongues of fire and uh, it was a roar. It says of wind. And so we need to understand that now, <laughs> two thousand twenty four years later, we do have that power. If we accept Christ, we are carriers of that Holy Spirit power. So there's no reason for us to take the bait. There's no reason for us to become emotionally entangled. Jesus understood that in his ministry. He understood the power of his words to bring life. He spoke the word and the people were healed. They were delivered from demons. They were healed spiritually. The blind received sight. When Jesus sent out his disciples and they did the same, Jesus saw the devil fall like lightning from the sky. So we have power in Christ, we have power. Luke ten nineteen says, When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Jesus taught his disciples and his teachings that are there to be applied into our lives. All of his teachings, all that he taught the disciples aren't just meant for them. They're for us. Every word of God is exactly purposefully there to edify each one of us. Even how the temple was built in, uh, in the first five books of, 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 the, of Moses, of the Torah, of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Some of them, some of those passages are like, and the temple needs to be measured exactly 50 cubits, and there should be blue cords, and there needs to be bronze and gold items. And one says, what am I reading? Every word of God is strategic. You just need to ask the Lord, how is it that I need to apply this word to my life today? So Jesus quoted scripture all the time. He always was quoting the Old Testament because he knew that scripture was in itself life-giving. When we quote scripture, it goes in and it begins to build life into the hearer. That's why it's good to post it on social media. 2 Timothy 3.16, 3, 3, 3, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Wow. I'll tell you what, Pastor Nick, when you are on social media trying to correct somebody, you all you need to do is use the word of God. And if you are throwing pearl before swine, 
you just skip those people and those mm-hmm. getting entangled into that bait of an argument, whatever it might be on whatever topic. And I think he already knows that. But Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit. The soul is your emotional level. And the spirit is what needs to be attached to heaven and be nourished by the word of God. Between joint and marrow, that's your physical body. So your physical body is healed when you are speaking and reading the word of God. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires there. It, 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 now our minds are being healed and being brought to alignment with heaven. And then verse 13 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. So if you're hiding some secret, if you're doing something in a secret place, he knows about it, he's there with you, and he wants you to understand that you need to stop if it's something that is full of sin. He wants that intimate time with you. That secret stuff, he wants that secret time with you. It says so all the time in the Word. I want to go. I'm in the secret place. I want you to be there with me. Not doing the devil's work, but doing what I want you to do, which is to have fellowship with him, intimacy with him. We can speak words of life. We can spring, We can speak words of death. It is our choice each day to make those st- strategic decisions. The power we have been given can open the doors for God to work in our lives and in the lives of others. Or we can just open up the doors of hell and allow the devil and his familiar spirits to destroy our lives and those we're praying over by speaking, like I said, words that are sabotaging, negative, um, opening doors that are negative over people's lives uh, because we just refuse. We're full of doubts. We're full of negativity and full of self-righteous pride. I know best. And I know it's never going to work. I know more than God. God's not around. I don't see him. So I'm going to speak words and I'm going to destroy any kind of hope that might exist for that situation. In Proverbs 18, 21, this is very powerful. It says, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. And I guess that was what my mom was trying to get me to understand as a little girl is that I was talking and talking and talking. Um, and I was going to end up bringing uh, situations of death and um, reap the consequences. She was helping me, trying to help me to mature. And I understand that today. Um, I'll never forget trying to trying to learn what I was doing wrong. Even today, I, I still fall into the traps of the enemy. I can still end up breaking uh, that cycle of life coming through me out of my own fear of making the mistake. I self-sabotage, so I need to stop doing that. And how do we stop doing that? We need to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord and say, Lord, this is something I recognize is something that is a sin in my life. It is something that is constantly a cycle of defeat, and I'm here to stop it now. I resist the devil, and he will flee from me. The enemy tries to come in one way, but he will go out seven ways because I am blessed and chosen, and I choose to dwell in that secret holy place with the Lord that opens the heavens. That is what how you walk with power and strategy. That is how you walk with power. And you know, Jesus was always the master of never taking the bait. He was the master of it because he was baited by the devil over and over again. The devil would use uh, uh, that religious spirit that operated through the Pharisees, many of them, that tried to tro- control Jesus' words and order him to shut him down. The devil will use his dark forces to puppet people that you are honoring or respecting to that love you and they will bait you as well because if they're weak-minded you don't need to be following them you need to find people that will hold you accountable people that are righteous people that are that make sure that their lives are transparent and that say i only want you to walk in the frequency of heaven and match up to your destiny each and every day in ephesians 6 11 and 12 Christ puts his identity in each one of us. That's why we need to just put on that identity by putting on God's armor. So we'll be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood. That sister-in-law, brother-in-law, that mother-in-law, or or your cousin, or your sister, or your mom, whoever it is that you seem to have some sort of contention with constantly, they are, you're not fighting against them personally. 
but there's familiar spirits, maybe operating through you, maybe operating through them. And you might say, I know that I am not doing anything against what the Lord would say. I know I didn't say anything. I know that I have not acted incorrectly, yet this person is baiting me and accusing me. What is going on? Well, you're now fighting against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. That second heaven is where that angelic war is going on. And we see the fruit of it. We need to break that mighty power in this dark world against evil spirits in the heavenly places. We need to go in and fight at that heavenly realm, at that heavenly powerful place by using the word of God, by using our words. Now, maybe at that moment when you're being baited by that person, you don't know what to say. You have no idea. But we have been given the power through our words to overcome the devil and all his plans for destruction and seduction in this world. Because you can be seduced by the baiting. You fall into those arguments because you know you're right and you know they are wrong. One of the stories I want to share is that this week I was overjoyed to be invited to my sister's home. I was happy to take the opportunity to uh, pray over her and her home. Uh, and I pray for her every day. But I rarely actually get to see her because of a deep root of bitterness and anger that has been set up in her life towards me. Uh, and, and I won't let it happen in my life. And I am ripping it out daily through my prayers for her. But it was really wonderful to receive that invitation. And I began immediately to contact my pastors and all of the pastoral team and ask them for their advice and their prayers. And I listened to people like my dad who shared a great Bible verse and I read it out loud. As I drove out to visit my sister and her husband, I spent time seeking the Lord so that no matter what, I would be ready for every battle. And you know what? He rewarded me with a wonderful healing visit and I got a second visit. So I am expectant of even more. And I say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for healing wounds that are that are bitter and dark and broken, and, and, and I will not take the bait. I will continue to pray and love over that person. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may you discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Some of us claim to have discernment. I know it all. I have discernment. Be careful. How can you test and discern that what you're saying is agree in agreement with heaven. Number one, does it encourage and build up that person to know Christ? Even careless words like some little mockery of, uh, you know, you won and you think you're so amazing that you won. And, oh, I hate to do this. And you put the winning piece. You've just lied. And you've actually brought in a spirit of deception by saying something so careless. Well, that could also be like a mockery too. And a mockery too, because you won and you're you're very proud of your mock of your win. But James 3, 8 through 12 says, But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. Ouch. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God, who are the image of bearers, but every human being on earth. All of us are there to to um we're there to praise the Father. You see someone that's overweight, instead of going, oh my gosh, how overweight they are. They look so terrible. They look so ugly. You need to instead say, ah, there's an image bearer. Lord, bless that image bearer. Bless her. I saw a nurse at the hospital last night that was, she had so much makeup on and her face, everything was pulled back. It was very Halloween almost looking. But she had a heart that was sweet. She was a kind person. And instead of just looking at the makeup and thinking, if only she'd take all that makeup off, I was like, you know what? She's an image bearer. Bless her. Thank you, Lord, for the way she's helping me. For the way, and I was able to bless her at the end. I thanked her because my eat, they said, have a great evening. I go, I will now. Thank you. For, thanks to you too. Thank you for blessing me. Just little words that would nourish them in some small way and encourage them. Do your words encourage? Verse 10, so blessings and curses come pouring out of the same mouth. How is that possible? Is that something wise? 
Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. No, it is not. Verse 11, does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No. You can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. I was thinking something. Let's see if, uh, if you are kind of like this double thing. I mean, <clears throat> when you say something that's supposed to be encouraging, would people uh, trust you? Yes. Because, I mean, they know that you also say a lot of negative stuff. So yeah. would they trust you when you try to say something that's positive? Yeah, you ruin your testimony when you are, when you operate at that level of mockery or sarcasm or, or deception. How about those compliments that are big lies? You know, oh, you look so great. When you, when you know, honestly, that you actually are not thinking that at all. You're just looking for the opportunity to gossip about them with someone else. Our words can be so careless and full of negativity, killing the spirit every time we speak with complaints, or gossiping, murmuring, arguing, speaking from a position of self-righteous pride. But James 3.17 says, But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace, loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism, and it is always sincere. You know, there's times where I have fallen for the devil's traps, and I don't blame him for my choices. Mm -mm. I recognize that as an image bearer of God, as a human, as a child of God in Christ, I'm accountable for every word and every choice I make before heaven. And I make the choice to fall for the bait that the devil puts before me or to resist it. God created us all with emotions. Some of us are more sensitive and inclined to become easily offended. I recognize this as an entry point for the devil to operate in my life personally. I have to guard my emotions, my soul. I must guard my soul from becoming entangled in anger or hurt or bitterness. A long time ago, the Lord taught me to always love and forgive. When the offenses come, I have to breathe in the God's word and love and forgive. And recently... Our senior pastor, Pastor Jackie Flores, included this. She said, keep serving as if you have never been offended. And this isn't easy unless you practice it over and over in every situation, seeking the Lord each moment of the day. Become self-aware, you know, like a Navy SEAL who's highly trained, ready for battle at every moment. Even if he's down, he's already, he's ready for combat, even if he's in downtime. So Lord, say, Lord, reveal to me, the areas of weakness and teach me how to overcome them. Because it's time to wake up about the truth in ourselves. The devil loves to keep us enclosed inside our little cage of illusion and denial. So where are you continually unaware? Where have you built up a little castle for the demonic spirit of ego to reside? It's in that place of denial or bitterness or control or anger or fear that the devil will constantly lay a trap for you and you will fall and your testimony will fall. Because we're called to be agents of change. He calls us to serve and love and forgive and bring his peace into every situation just like he commissioned the disciples to go out two by two into your home, into your business, your job, your classroom. How can you be agents of change if you remain full of your own self-importance and are easily offended? Or running around shooting your mouth off full of words of deception. There is a praise song that the Lord puts on my heart to sing when I am in dangerous waters. It's called Open the Eyes of My Heart. It's based off Ephesians 1.18. And I sing it when I sense the danger. You know, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, I want to see Jesus. When I'm around people that look to bait me with their passive aggressive behavior or reject me or they're in my face with false accusations or character assassination and the alarms sound off, I have to begin singing. Sometimes I have to just walk away, maybe use the restroom, pray in tongues, go outside and get some air and say, Lord, I will not fall for this bait. At the very same time, I've got to recognize that it's the devil that's goading me so that I will get offended with that person and then I won't be able to minister to them any longer. And then, of course, you fall into becoming offended. And then you disgust the person and disgust the Lord. Your testimony is smeared. And you have to repent of that bitterness or those words that you spoke. You have to humble yourself and ask those for forgiveness and come before the Lord with repentance. So where are you today? 
It is the Lord awakening you to some areas of sin where the devil can trap you. Um, are you baited and easily offended? Do you fall into that offense? Be aware of your words and emotions. Be aware of your attitude and where you spend, what you spend time doing each day. Are you constantly listening to other people offended? You know, some of these YouTubers, all they do is speak words of sarcasm or mockery or put downs or they think that they're the only ones that are right and you better listen to them. Instead, let's make the Lord and his word most important in our lives. Let's speak words of life and prophecy into every situation. Use your words and describe how heaven wants the situation to go so that you are prophetically speaking in words of eternal hope. Open your emotions, your soul, to Jesus and have him help you to release all entanglements of offense, bitterness, or self-righteous pride. Be ready to bring his peace into every situation this week. So let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much, Lord, for this morning. Every person that is tuning in, Father, there might be little, small, little castles of, of the ego that is inside of them operating and saying, Oh, I have discernment. It's called my own self-righteous pride. I think I know it all. And I can say whatever I want, and it's golden, and I get to say it. But Lord, show us, Lord, how prideful and ugly that is. Help us to understand, Lord, that we cannot be that kind of Christian. We will not be an agent of change. We repent, Lord, of being that kind of person, that kind of Christian that is full of self-righteous pride and vain conceit, that the Lord is, says, you are useful to me. I spew you out. You aren't an agent of change. And the devil is operating through you. And people are not able to see me shine through you. And so I ask you, Lord, right now to forgive each one of us. Forgive each one of us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, all words of deception, all careless words, all words that are um, full of self-sabotage or mockery or put-downs, or negative. They want to finish the sentence off with negativity because they're the only ones that are right. They are the only ones. Father, forgive us because you give us the mind of Christ and your ways are higher than our ways and your, um, your, your solutions are better than our solutions. Thank you, Lord, that your thoughts about us are higher than our thoughts. Thank you, Lord, that you see us as a diamond even though we might just see a lump of coal. Thank you, Jesus, for each person today, because we want heaven to be ushered into their life. We want light shining in those dark, ugly corners uh, where we are deluded and think that we are so full of, uh, uh, we're so amazing. But really, you cannot use those areas. They're for you. They are ugly, ugly and, and hideous, and they're just full of salt, and we cannot be salty. We need to be uh, fountains of fresh spring cleansing water that brings life in every situation. And agents of change need to be ready to always be uh, on the alert and, and, and not take the bait and not fall into the devil's plans. And so that is what I speak into each this morning over each person that's tuned in. Forgive us, Lord, and fill us up this day with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer with us this morning and you desire more understanding, you really want to learn more, uh, I encourage you to get a hold of us. You can private message us. Uh, we have a Facebook page, uh, Life for the Nations Camarillo. I'm Pastor Jen. This is Pastor Nick, in case I forgot to introduce us. And I also um, want to pass the time over to Pastor Nick now. Thank you, Pastor Jen. Um, like you mentioned, next week we have some incident. But, um, Praise it's, God, uh, it's over. Yeah, it's still pain, aching, and aching, but um, now I kind of fall back. I probably used to listen to a sermon anyway, so it's, um, so we'll see. Maybe. Speak a little louder. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe next week I can probably talk about it more. Yes. But today I want to talk about God is in control. Amen. And he was last night. Yeah. He was so, in spite of everything. Yeah. So what is the most important thing that we can do in our lives? In First Corinthians 15, 3 to, 7, um, 3 to 4, it says, For I delivered to you as... Uh, as of first importance, what also, but I also received that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scripture. So we put our trust in the work of Jesus, what he did in the cross, and that he died for our sins, that we are uh, 
accepting that gift that he gave us so that we can uh, be saved and have eternal life. But also another important thing is that we understand the sovereignty of God. Amen. Is that the supreme power or authority of God. So life can sometimes throw a curveball, like yesterday. <laughs> Maybe sometimes uh, something happens and you did not expect, like yesterday. Uh, which can be a lot of stuff. I mean, life can include like a lot of unexpected things, pains, uh, bills, layoffs, all different Tax, kind of stuff. New taxes. New taxes. Uh, so when tough things happen in our life, do we still trust that God is in charge over his creation? So things might happen because of we make a wrong choice. And sometimes God also allows things to happen like what we read in Job. And he can use the circumstance to test us. Uh, when we know that God is sovereign, is there anything we can call luck or chance or faith? Like we often hear like, okay, it was just luck, it was just faith, or, or that was just uh, karma, they'll use karma, karma. karma kind of stuff. So does anything happen without God is aware of it uh, or, and he can control it? So nothing happens by a chance or just a sudden something appears without anything in control. In Ephesians 1.11 it says, also we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to his purpose. Who works all things after the control of his will. Ca counsel. But in this. Okay, okay, okay. Counsel uh, uh, after, uh, after the counsel of his will. Control, okay. I, I was reading too fast there. So after the counsel of his will. Amen. So this is something we have to, we have a hard time to understand sometimes. But God orchestra things so, uh, so, it will, so we will go where he wants us to be. Because he has a destiny for each one of us. So he's kind of uh, organizing stuff so that. I mean, sometimes it could be years in going for maybe like something happens down here like five years ago or something that happens like today mm. because something was already starting to set into motion like mm. five years, four years ago. And now like, let's say if something happened like 2000, let's say in this case, like 19 and then 2024, something happens because something was already set into motion like five years ago. Wow. So tell us more. Yeah, so I want is, the background story okay, on that. Okay, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if I had that type here, but so this is something that I have seen lately in our lives. So like we mentioned before that we are moving up to San Jose, but we can see how God is directing this whole move. And it's been almost like, uh, right now it's been almost like a year in process, this whole thing. Uh, so to kind of go back in history, it started like, like May last year or something, I don't remember, like it was sometime in the spring and it was like a previous colleague from like a previous company uh, he called me like and asked if I was interested to work in the department he is manager for so I sent him resume to him and I didn't hear anything back until like uh, well, but then uh, I kind of started to apply for other companies and uh, when we were in uh, Sweden this uh, last summer I got a call for like two people like about the interviews like two recruiters so I applied and uh, I went for the interviews and uh, I got an, uh, an offer from one of them mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, it's probably like 20 minutes away from where we live right now and it was it was a pretty good offer, offer it was like an end of September and it was definitely it was better paid than I had in my current one but I did not feel fierce about it and I was kind of resting with God that night like uh, I kind of felt like I have to turn this thing down, but like the offer was like much better than I have right now. So God, why do I have to turn it down? But I did have a piece about it, so I kind of told the recruiter, no, I can't take, take this thing. And then a few days later, this previous colleague contacted me again and said that uh, there was like a hiring freeze, so that's why nothing happened. But now it's like, now the position is open again. And uh, they want to have uh, me for like uh, like the online interviews, like you cannot sit on the Zoom meeting with other teams in this case, and then you cannot talk. It's like the, the first meeting. Yeah, that, like the first kind of screening thing. But I, I spoke I spoke with like four people there. Um, so now, but it was kind of also inter interesting that at, uh, just before I went to have this meeting, our senior pastor, Jackie, she came there and she said that I, she was seeing something coming, some change in our lives. Um, and then like, I think like the same week, like around the date you mentioned, I, I had like this interviews online. 
So I had this point used. And, and, and I thought it was just a change for him, not me. Yeah. <laughs> No, we thought it was more like a startup business or something. Or we thought it would be work from home and, yeah. and be part of that corporation. So, so yeah. But then um, I had this interview. I didn't hear anything back for like uh, probably until November, mid November or something. Then they said, well, we want you here for like an on site interview. So then uh, we, the whole family, we took a road trip out to San Francisco or San Jose in this case, just like before Christmas. Uh, while I had my interview, they kind of explored San Francisco. And had like a how much a half day in San Francisco, and then uh, I didn't hear anything back. Like, um, but then you have Christmas break and that kind of stuff. And then like two weeks after New Year, they came back to me and said that they want to offer me another position. And this time I felt peace about uh, to to accept it, even though it's kind of like even though you said like yeah, it is an on site. You have to move up. You have to move up to the, the relocation. But we had kind of talked a little bit about before. And we were kind of like. Yes, we can do it if that's what they want. If you remember that, you, you were okay with it. I always have been okay in my spirit. It's my emotions yeah. that got tangled up and I was like, nah. So Pastor Jack and Ismail got on a yeah. Zoom call and really helped us to firm up that this was the right decision and we didn't need to be, me especially, emotionally entangled and upset about things. Because if that's where we're meant to go, then that is where all the answers are in his will. We don't need to be holding back and, and stunting our growth and our, and our, and our ministry and, and our children's future by holding on to what he doesn't want us to hold on to any longer. And that includes living in this city. Yeah. But like what I said, like I mean, I felt peace about the position compared That's to right. the, the other other one. I, and I did too. And, and I, I knew the green light was there. But it was the same thing with like this two the other position I kind of interviewed for like the summer. I I didn't really feel peace about any of them. Um, so it's like. Uh, and they would have kept us in this county yes. and in this city. Yes. So then, uh, okay, so I accepted the offer. I started a background check because usually you have to kind of do like a background check. It's like two weeks. Uh, so and then I had to wait until this one passed before I could resign from my current position. <clears throat> so that's kind of what they say, like, okay, so don't resign until you have passed this background check. Because if you find something and you don't pass, then, well, now you have resigned and now you don't have the new job and then you don't have the old job. So they said that don't resign until you passed. So then uh, I think like a Monday, two weeks ago, <clears throat> we got like an uh, email from our manager in Sweden. Uh, from the uh, current company. Yeah, from the current company in Sweden. So that uh, they want to have a, like a meeting that morning and that uh, that our re research and development team in Cambodia, they were let go. So they basically, they kind of they closed down the research and development here in the United States. It's uh, such a, an amazing moment, domino effect. Yeah, so it's, we uh, God orchestrated each thing. So, so we each had a meeting with, with him that morning. And then, uh, I mean, for me, it was no bad news because I already knew that I was in the process of this new job. But uh, so what happened was that um, yeah, yes, yeah, we're all already planning to leave. And uh, but now because we were let go, I would also get a severance package from this this current company. And the interesting thing that the next day, like on Tuesday, I got the, the notice I, I passed my background check. So if I would have passed it like a week before, I would have resigned and now I would not have been able to get the severance pay. So it's kind of interesting that how God kind of almost held it back because he knew what was coming. And like you said, it was, it all started six years ago, five years ago. When were you with this coworker? Yeah, it was like 10 years ago. So 10 years ago. It was like before 2013. And, and so he already had a legacy with that coworker. That coworker knew that he was a guy that was trustworthy, honorable, and had great knowledge and would be an asset to the company, which is why he went after him. Yes, yeah, so I, I mean, I've been in contact with him. He kind of helped me to interview for another company he was working for, but then um, it was a good thing I didn't take off because he also left that one too. So it's, uh, It wasn't a good one. It wasn't a good fit. But, uh, so I... I mean, but I haven't had contact with him for probably some time. So it was kind of interesting when he out of the blue he also contacted me. So, but anyway, so we saw this as a confirmation that God is moving us to a new place. That's right. Because even if I would have said no to this position, I have nothing to fall back on here now That's in, right. in Camarillo because this position is gone. But it's like it's more amazing that I'm like an odd oh, how God kind of orchestra things to work for his plan and his to the right day. I mean, like one day before I got the pass, I mean, 
this other company was resigning so like it's kind of interesting how like the up to like the days or even sometimes like the seconds that the, how he can orchestra thing and how it's been kind of like something moving in like almost like a year mm, mm. Amen. So, uh, and also believe that God. This is amazing. So, I got put like the idea in my heart to be open for a new job. Um, when I got this phone call and asked if I was interested to apply it, so like then I asked, sure, yes, I do it. Because I've been, this thing with the art comp, current company, I, it's the feeling I had like for like probably two years now that, that eventually they're going to close it down. So, it's, I've been kind of looking, uh, not kind of really actively, but looking to see if something comes up that I really feel like, okay, this is where I want to go. Um, but I don't say that you should just sit and wait for something to, uh, someone to contact you. I believe that God wants us to, to do our part and listen to him when it's time to make a choice. Yeah, you better be ready yeah. for those big choices. You better have that firm foundation. Even last night at the hospital, yeah. I was like, what can I do right now to create an atmosphere of open heavens over this hospital room? And the Lord put on my heart to start reading Psalms. I read Psalms 91, then I went back to Psalms 23, and then I just read 24, 25, 26, 27. Until finally we were led to uh, a gurney, and he laid down and just went to sleep. And I was able to rest as well. I knew that I was to create that atmosphere. I knew that I wasn't to be distracted when we were there. And it's the same thing. We went through this big, amazing season, this, you know, we're going to be moving season. And what is your foundation? Do you have people that are helping you out, that are girding you up and praying over you? Pastor Jackie saw it in October mm -hmm. to ready us. Do you have people that are speaking into your life saying, I'm praying for you actively and I know I see something coming and uh, I want you to be prepared, and I want to support you in the, in the changes, because they're going to be big. And we actually had a prophetic word like five years ago in 2020, the summer of 2020, when the whole pandemic was happening, someone from South Africa spoke into, or Australia spoke into your life and said that in the next two years, you're going to have drastic and different changes coming into your life. And you know, it could be that even in this time of, of moving to San Jose, things still change up there mm -hmm. and move into a completely different direction. So you just don't know and you, you just have to make sure your foundation is so incredibly clear on where the Lord wants you to be. Yeah. So I mean, sometimes uh, when we kind of get to our destination, we also might go through hardship to reach where God wants us to take us uh, and use us. Uh, if you start to read like in Genesis 37 and we read about Joseph and we kind of start from 37 is that he got dreams about his future which offended his brother and he later was sold by his brother as a slave to some Midianites traders that was passing by and he was brought to Egypt and sold as a slave to Potiphar as an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh the captain of the bodyguard and he did very well and he became Potiphar's personal servant and, and he made him overseer over his, his house so that the, so all that he owned was put in Joseph's charge. And then we read about how Potiphar's wife is trying to seduce him, but he was not falling, he was not taking the bait. And eventually she kind of falsely accused him and then he was thrown into jail. And here I kind of suspect that Potiphar kind of knew that Joseph was innocent. But I think that his wife probably had some kind of high status so that uh, to kind of I don't think he could really was a accuse her. So then basically he kind of threw Joseph, in, uh, Joseph into jail. That, that's why I, I... He took the brunt of the whole thing, yeah, so even so though it, it wasn't his fault. Yeah. So now Joseph saw some drawback. And Joseph could have turned and uh, turned sour, sour, mm -hmm. sour and started to kind of basically despair and say, this is no fair. But he trusted God. That's right. Amen. And when we continue to read, it says that the Lord was with Joseph and gave him favor in the sight of the chief giver. So now the question is, when we are going uh, through hardship, hardship, or we continue to trust the Lord and do our best to, to just glorify him, like what it says now, that the Lord, that Lord was with Joseph. Uh, so now Joseph started to prosper in everything he did in the jail too. So now he was also put into charge in, uh, by the, what I call the, the chief jailer and that kind of stuff. 
So then we read about these two people that were in jail who had some dreams and Joseph interpreted them and they came true. But it still took a few more years before he was released from jail. Um, so I think there was, in total he was like, uh, like in slavery or like, you know, for like 12 years before he was standing before, before Pharaoh to interpret the dreams that Pharaoh had. And then he was promoted to the second in command in Egypt. So from 12 years of pain, everything changed in one day. And he was elevated just below Pharaoh. Mm. That's uh, right. I was also thinking like, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, when he kind of came into that status, I wonder if like Potiphar or, and his wife were afraid of them because I mean, now yeah. he was like in a high status of them. And, and she knew that she has falsely accused him. Yep. So I mean, so he could have become, if he was like, Vengeful. I'm going to be revenge. I'm going to put you into jail. I mean, yeah. he could have done that. He could have. But uh, but he he knew God's purpose, and that um, this is the way it had to kind of go for him to be able to come to that level, so he could be just be saving both I mean, Egypt, but also his people. And vengeance is mine, says the yeah. Lord. The Lord's vengeance will be far worse than anything you could cook up, and. And the devil will just entrap you with bitterness if you go that direction, which mm. is why the Lord says, just let me handle it. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, he could never have got into this position, even if he worked hard. But only through God uh, or orchestration, he was put in that uh, position. And we often hear that a person, like uh, maybe some people said, okay, that person was lucky because he was at the right place at the right time. But in, I believe that God is the one that directs us and creates those moments. Amen. So he's directing that you're supposed to meet that guy at that, or that person at that, that, that time, that moment. Yeah. Uh, so, so that to kind of build up some relationship and maybe like you start something there and then like maybe five years later, I'm going to use that moment to, for this position. So it's kind of interesting to see how everything kind of works together to kind of help so that God is directing us to the destiny that have that He has for us for the next level in our destiny. That's right, Amen. So maybe you might be in a low place right now, and you don't know why you're going through this tough time. But we need to make sure that there is no sin in our life that That's is right. causing this thing. Yeah, take a look at your mm-hmm. life. Don't be in denial. If yeah. you have sin and that's the reason you're going through the hard time, yeah, then, it's, then it's time to wake up yes. and repent. So first we need to make sure that there's uh, like what is, so ask the Holy Spirit to show you if there is anything that you need to remove or repent for in your life. But if you know there's nothing and you have and you have put your trust in God and that He is guiding you to your destiny and continue to work on the assignment that He has given you, like Joseph did. So it's like I mean Joseph didn't just wait because he kinda it's like his dream that he was supposed to be like elevated. He continued to work in this place he was put like in the in a police for the house. In the jail. And he worked with honor as yes, well. Yes, and he worked with integrity and honor. Integrity and honor. And that's what we, that. have to kind of, we have to continue to work on the assignment we have for that moment. That's right. Because we have all this, we always have an assignment. It's not like we are waiting for this uh, mega assignment we have in the future. We always have assignment on the way we have to continue mm-hmm. to work. Mm-hmm. That's because right. Because God is also using that part to, let us, to help us grow. Mm-hmm. So we are ready for that when we come to the assignment. Because maybe... You can't just go from this position to this position and you have everything ready because during this time you're learning stuff you're going to use in this position up here. We have a, a phrase that is also always being used in uh, Vida para las Naciones Internacional and that is there can be no progress unless you go through the process, process yes. and there's no shortcut. Yes. So I, I, can, I can imagine that it wasn't easy to like day in and day out to work in the jail uh, which was most likely not a pleasant place to be. Like, I mean, and plus he prophesied to these two men yeah. from the court of Pharaoh and asked them to mention his name, yeah. and they never did anything yeah, about it until about two years. Well, one of them was that, actually the prophecy was that he would be executed, yeah, and he was. And he was yeah. But the other had the opportunity to speak out words mm-hmm. that he forgot. Typical, right, where Jesus brings great healing into our lives, and we forget to praise him, we forget mm-hmm. to give him glory, we forget to tell others about his how amazing things were. Instead, we want to take the credit. Yeah. So, so uh, like James says in 1, uh, 2 to 4, consider, consider all joy, my brethren, <clears throat> when you account the various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produced endurance. 
And that endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Mm-hmm. So during this test, you are like producing endurance. You are like what you mentioned, like the there's no progress without uh, process. So that is always a process. You God is always mm-hmm. using this thing to kind of help you to grow, Amen. learn new stuff, Amen. new skills that you would use in the future. So it's so it's always kind of helping you to grow and grow and grow Amen. in maturity and, and then also skills and, and then what he wants you to be you what, what he wants you to use in that position he's, yes, he's taking you to that's right so let's pray Lord we ask pray for that you are always working our lives Lord yes. that you have our lives in your hands Lord and that you are directing it's amazing to see how you are directing like stuff that might have happened like five years ago is something that affects what what like what happened today? So we just pray right now, Lord, that we are always we always in that process to just do everything with diligence, Lord, with integrity, Lord, and that way you pull us right now, Lord, that we work with with uh, uh, that as we work with you, Lord, because we want to glorify your name, Lord. So we pray, Lord, that no matter if we are like in a dark time, if we're a tough time, the job might not be fun. We still continue to work. As we work with you, Lord, we do everything with diligence That's and right. integrity, Amen. Lord, because we want your name to be glorified. Because we know that each, each, mm. there is a progress. There is a progress, Lord. Amen. And there is a process, always a process. And that we are always kind of uh, work in that process to just continue to grow mm. and mature to the level that you want us to, to be for the Amen. next time. Amen. That's right. So we pray for each one who are there, out there right now, Lord, give them strength, continue to just work with diligence, Lord, in integrity, Lord, that they will just be uh, Christ-like wherever they are, Lord, and that they will just show integrity mm. and that, that the Amen. name will be glorified wherever That's they right. are. That's right, amen. And the people see that even he's going through a tough time, he still has his Hallelujah. trust in you, Lord. That's right. And that's what we pray, Lord, that, that it will be a testament to each one who sees us, Lord. Lord, we just lift up and dedicate this day to you. We pray for our nation. We continue to pray for that righteousness will rise up in this nation. Hallelujah. And we see your will be done over this That's nation, right. Lord. Speak and that this nation will nation. become a nation that is under God. Lord. That's right. That like what it says in, in our in our bill, Lord, that uh, one nation under God. And that's mm. what we pray for this Amen. nation right now. That's Lord. right. That will be a revival. Thank you, and Jesus. And that will be a transition in this nation. Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just lift up and dedicate this day to you. In your name, pray. Amen. 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 Well, we're so glad that you joined us here this morning. We are also on, um, this whole recording will be on my YouTube channel called Jennifer Moline YouTube channel. Um, we are Life for the Nations Camarillo. Uh, you can contact us, like I said earlier, if you have any questions, if you want prayer, if you have um, any kind of situation going on in your life, we can pray over you and release the power of God over the whole situation. Uh, so be remembered, what are the two things we learned today? Don't take the bait, don't fall into the devil's traps and start speaking words that are careless. And also know that you are a strategic person, that you are, what that, would you say? That God is in control. That God is in control. Hallelujah. So have a great Sunday and be blessed. Goodbye.